Today's episode is on our Blooming Art Tea, which is a great way to share tea. Um, fall is right around the corner. People are starting to sell back into their routines with winter coming up and the holidays. This might be a great idea for you to build community. So today we have our Blooming Art Tea. And Blooming Art Tea is kind of, um, this flowering tea that blooms open. So that's why it's called Blooming Art Tea. It starts off as a small, well, it's not small really, but it comes as green tea leaves, and that's how ours is, as this little bud here. And you'll see this little cotton string. And this is all hand tied. All these tea leaves are meticulously hand tied with a flower inside of it, so that after it's all tied with fresh leaves, with the flowers in it to artistically bloom as the certain design of the Blooming Art Tea, or um, there's many, many different designs that you can get out there. Some of them will be scented with different flavors. Ours are just naturally green tea with the natural flowers inside them. And we have uh, four to six different kinds. This is my favorite is the Awakening Spirit. It's just because I just like the, the taste of the flowers of the jasmine, mass mantis that are in there. But anyways, these are all hand tied individual tea leaves and flowers that when they are compressed and dry, they look like this little small little bud here. It looks like not that much tea, but it's very tightly compressed. And then when it opens, it actually makes about four cups or four pots of tea, potentially. Because the technical way of manufacturing um, or measuring out your tea is two and a half grams. Well, this is way more than two and a half grams of tea, way more than a teaspoon of tea. So your tea, for the Blooming Art tea, some people think, oh my goodness, mine was so bitter, it tasted terrible. Probably because it infused too long, um, probably wasn't enjoyed quickly enough because it is a lot of tea in there and it can get a little bitter if you steep it too long or don't drink it fast enough. Um, you have to decant, that means separating the water from the tea leaves as quickly as possible um, after it's hit about two minutes of steeping, otherwise it's gonna just be very oversteeped tea. And then here is one that is the Lily Basket. And you can see that it just opens very beautifully and blooms open. So what you do to make your Blooming Art Tea is you just need a cup and some water or a teapot and some water. But glass is always much better because you can enjoy it a lot better. You put your bud or your tea leaves, whether it's loose leaf tea or the flowering tea bud, you always want to put it in first in your vessel and then pour water over it. I'm going to show you. You might not be able to see it very well. But the reason why you always want to put water over your tea leaves is that then the water is starting to penetrate the tea leaves evenly that is starting to kind of agitate it's very hot to be holding on the side like that agitate the tea leaves and infuse them evenly because if you dunk your tea leaves in there will be parts of the tea leaves that will not infuse properly in the water they did not evenly get wet essentially is what that means so this is the blooming art tea and some people say, well, my Blooming Art Tea didn't open up. There's no way that it wouldn't open up unless your water temperature wasn't hot enough. If you follow the guidance of the tea type, so this is a green tea, you would technically put just steaming hot water, which would be 175 degrees Fahrenheit. But it would only open up very slowly. It might take a long time because the water is not hot enough to create a faster extraction time. That's why with the mug that I had, I started it before this um, live episode because I knew I put a lower temperature. It took this long until it opened up. It took about 10 minutes for it to open up. But do you see how the liqueur is very dark on the bottom? That means it is very strong and bitter. That's where it has kind of oversteeped. And near the top, where less of the liqueur, the 
tea infusion is, is lighter and less strong. However, I bet this is going to be really strong. Let me taste it. Actually, not too bad. Probably because I put 175 degrees water. So that is the same amount of tea that's even in this pot. And you'll notice that this pot is a lot lighter colored because there's just more water for the tea to infuse in. And it's taking a while for it to open up, but it eventually will open it up, will open up. It's the same design, it's still a lily basket. And so it's great for any sort of centerpiece. And definitely if you're to serve it in a pot with friends and family around, that's the best way to have it. Not only because of the relationships that you're building, not only because you're having a great time with your friends and family and just growing to know who you are together, but um, you're also probably not going to have very bitter tea because you're probably gonna pour it out faster, probably serve four cups of tea before you um, before the tea gets too bitter and then you can re-steep it up to four times and that's true of any high quality tea or tea leaf so now you'll notice the lily basket is starting to actually have its handle it's opening up it's kind of cool looks like a sea anemone opening up but yeah that's the that's the blooming art tea and there's many different ways you can make it. So if you just like the tea for its taste, you don't have to make it in a teapot at home or in your office, at work, or you know, wherever you're, you're at. There are many ways to do it. You can have it in just a glass mug. I typically display mine at um, holiday shows or just at this Alaska State Fair. We had them beautifully displayed in these wine glasses, these tall stem wine glasses. And then we even have these double walled tea travel mugs that come with some of them in there. So don't make two at the same time because that is only 10 ounces. It's gonna be really strong tea. You only wanna put one in there at a time. Take your paper out. So you're gonna have your Blooming Art tea in there. And it's double walled so you won't burn your hands. I don't know if you can see that little gap in there. Sorry, this is the tag. Take that off. So this is actually hand-blown borosilicate glass, which is the same glass that Pyrex is made out of. This is a double-walled glass tea travel mug, so if you really like this Blooming Art tea and it's really special for you to have tea time to go, you can just put one of these with hot water in there. I'll show you. Just gonna pour off some hot water in there. I'm not exactly sure which Blooming Art tea this is. Kind of a mystery. And it's gonna float out the top. You can put your lid back on it. But this actually has a strainer in the two part lid where you can drink your tea. I don't know if you see it or not. I'm taking this off. So this could be even your own special tea time where it has a screen in there and it filters out your tea so you don't drink your blooming art tea. You can put any kind of tea in here. You could put loose leaf tea, you could put the flowering tea in there, you can put a tea bag if you want to have to put a tea bag in. A lot of people ask me, can I put tea bag teas? Yes, anything. It will strain it out for you. So anyway, that's a little bit about the Blooming Art Tea. We have these teas infusers. They're also great that are, you set them right on top of your cup and it presses a plate on the bottom where it drains down. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about our Blooming Art Tea. And now you'll see that after I've been talking this whole time, the Lily Basket has opened up a lot more. Great gift for friends and family. Thanksgiving's coming up. If you're just starting college, maybe you want to have some tea time with some new friends you're making in the dorms. But um, yeah, and usually people are like, what is in your cup? Especially when I have it in a tea travel mug, they're like, uh, I don't think you're supposed to have that. It's just tea. And this is boiling hot water. It's not hot at all. The, the glass isn't hot to touch at all. But definitely don't waste your flowering art your Blooming Art Tea. It is great for up to four steepings and you'll see it's starting to get really strong. So if your tea is ever too bitter, just water it down a little bit. Typically has to do with the ratio of the amount of tea leaves to the water and that creates the liqueur. So if your liqueur is a little too strong, then you might want to think about watering it down or pouring it over ice and making some iced tea. 
So today's episode was on the Blooming Art Tea, which comes in so many different designs, shapes, sizes. They have them in so many different designs. All their flavors change depending on uh, what kind of flowers are in them. Tip typically, you might be able to see them at some other tea places that have them fla uh, flavored, but we don't flavor our Blooming Art Teas. We want them to taste natural from the flowers that they're with. But, and, and if you ever want to flavor your tea, you could always put some juice in it or some sort of flavor. It'd be great with some honey, some lo local honey. And again, this is Jenny with Sipping Streams Tea Company. And thank you so much for joining me.